you know, the presence that we actually have every day is a fitting topic how we start in, in everyday excellence amongst our employees because, again, they, they work hard every day. They work hard on their birthdays uh, as well. And I'd like to call our Chief Information Officer, Barry Condry, up to the podium. Uh, he's here to share in the many ways, and, and I repeat, many ways that this county uh, IST department has served our community very well, especially with vaccination efforts and, and other, and you see a lot of his employees. And this is the team that, again, is not necessarily on the front lines and what people see every day, but this is the uh, so, so important uh, back uh, behind the curtain team that we would not survive without what you see before you. So, Mr. Condry. Thank you, Joe. Happy birthday, boss. So, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, Dr. Casey, uh, thank you for giving us a few minutes today to recognize the contribution of the IST staff in the vaccination efforts of the county. Um, there are hundreds of county and health district personnel that have worked tirelessly to vaccinate residents and employees in Chesterfield. It's been a true team approach. I'm simply here today to recognize the IST portion of that, of that approach. Uh, the folks that are with me, the five people that are here, are part of a larger IST force that has been involved in this. Uh, they've supported the delivery of vaccines for county employees and for health district residents for the past three or four months. Uh, there are a total of 30 IST employees that have made these, con these huge contributions to this effort. So I'm just bringing you a small sample of what, what's really out there in terms of the support. And I'd ask them just to step up to the mic real briefly, give you their name and the, and the group that they work in at IST. Um, Daniel Rubio in application development. I'm Lauren Henry. I'm in e-government services. Chris Coleman, e-government services uh, developer. Todd Wells, IST business relationship management team. Sherry Hensley, e-government services. Okay, thank you for introducing yourselves. So here's a list of the 30 people um, that actually have um, you know, contributed so heavily. Uh, in the last three months, these people have spent 700 hours in 45 different vaccination clinics in three different locations to vaccinate both employees and residents of the health district. That's Powhatan residents, as well as Colonial Heights, as well as Chesterfield. Uh, every single group in IST has contributed to this effort, and you know, you're looking at about a third of, of the entire department that's been either working full-time or nearly full-time on this effort over that course of time. And that's uh, Indraprit Singh, who's actually helping, doing some training there with one of our, one of our volunteers. Um, so we don't tell the Virginia Department of Health how to run a clinic, and we don't tell the fire department how to run a clinic. That's not our job. Our job is to wrap technology around their processes so that we can improve efficiencies, give them new information, and collaboratively improve the environment so we can vaccinate more people more quickly, more safely in these, in these pods. And our support took on three forms in these, in these pods, vaccination clinics, same term. First of all, we do training. Every time we're in a, in a vaccination clinic, we have to do training for the volunteers on the application that we provided, as well as the infrastructure, how to use the tablet. Sometimes it's just basic Windows skills, how to use a, how to use a web application. So you'll see here, Sherry's actually doing training for a bunch of vaccinators who are gonna be, um, who are gonna be using the system. The other thing we do is one-on-one -on -one support. Now there's a wide variety of problems and questions and conundrums that come up in vaccination clinics and we help use our application to sort through these, through these efforts. And um, it's, a lot of this is one-on-one -on -one work. It's Tori Kirby on the left and Tajin Ma on the right providing one-on-one -on -one support for people who are doing the, um, the check-in function. And finally, um, what we do, and this is probably the funnest thing we do in the, in the clinics, is we step in when there aren't enough volunteers, when there aren't enough hands to go around or there aren't enough volunteers, we will step in and check in residents, we will check out residents, we will push wheelchairs, we will schedule residents, uh, we will help them get to their cars, uh, whatever the situation calls for, our employees have been pressed into service doing all of the jobs except injecting people. That's the only thing we're not qualified to do uh, for the, um, in the clinics. The dashboard you see on the left is the main dashboard that the 
administrators of the pod use to manage the clinic. It gives them at a very quick glance, a very heads up display, tells them how the clinic is working, how many people aren't showing up, how many people are showing up that they hadn't planned for. Um, that it tells them the overall uh, minutes it takes to get somebody from checked in to vaccinated so they know whether they need to put more resources in a certain area of the clinic or another. It, it lends itself to a very smooth operation for the residents through using this dashboard. It's a 100% paperless solution and it manages everything from the invitation to the consent questions and capturing the contact information through to the scheduling into the, into the vaccine clinic and then the rescheduling if required and the follow-up emails and reminder emails. It's a full end-to-end -end solution. It was developed 100% on Microsoft technologies in the secure Microsoft government cloud. And so far we have spent a grand total of $1,900 in cloud access charges for this as compared to perhaps $100,000 for a different vendor's package or $20,000 a month for another package. This has cost us less than $2,000 in actual cloud charges for the way it's been architected. So a lot of numbers on this slide, a lot of information. I'm a numbers guy, you know I'm gonna bring you numbers, but so just a few that I will highlight on this is uh, the first one, 35,000 doses administered with the system. That's both dose one and dose two. And that number's gonna climb as we continue doing clinics through the end of this week and through the end of May for dose one. Uh, the 18.6 minutes in the building is something that we're very proud of. The way our staff work with the application and the application that's been constructed ensures that you will not spend more than 20 minutes in the fairgrounds building or in the pod that you're in. It's really important not to have them waiting in line, not to have them all congregating uh, in line in the building uh, together. So and that includes the 15 minute waiting period. So it's 3.6 minutes from the time you walk in the building until the time you're sitting in the chair waiting for your 15 minutes. And uh, I don't think you'll find that level of service in any vaccination clinic in Virginia. We've really set a new standard for this. And the other thing we're really proud of is the fact that we now run clinics with nine fewer volunteers than when we started. Nine fewer people have to be there because of the automation that we've brought to the, to the table with this. And uh, that gives the health department and the medical res reserve corps, you know, a lot more options. They don't have to burn their people out as much. We can have fewer people in the clinic. Now I have to give a shout out to Mark Penny in Parks and Rec. He is the manager of the fairgrounds site, and he had a he had a great idea that we should do a customer service survey for the uh, for the vaccine clinic. Now, how often do you see a customer service survey when you get a vaccine? Right? It's a very unusual it's a very unusual idea, and you have in front of you a card. Uh, that card is handed to each person who gets a vaccine. They go and they sit for 15 minutes, and Mark's idea was, hey, they're just sitting there for 15 minutes, why not give them something to do, right? So they hit the QR code on the back of the card, it takes them to a Microsoft survey form, and we've, we've collected hundreds of survey responses and an overall rating of, I believe it's actually 4.96 um, of out of five, it's just overwhelmingly supportive by the residents. And you can see a, just a representative sample of the, um, of the comments that are left. Uh, the one I like the most is not up here. It's on the overall operation of the pot at the fairgrounds. And the person said, quote, the operation is smooth like butter on a hot biscuit. That's my, that's my, fav that's my favorite so far. And, it's, <laughs> and speaking of biscuits, Mark also provides, he also provides lunch. And he does a great job at that too. So big shout out to, to Mark Penny for that. And so in closing, I'd just like to thank you for your support, uh, for allowing us to recognize uh, our staff that have worked so hard on this. They really have put in a great deal of work and uh, have a great deal of pride in what they've built and what they've accomplished at the fairgrounds and the Public Safety Training Center. Uh, and again, thank you for your support. With your support, we would not be able to support the health department <clears throat> in providing this outstanding level of service. So thank you very much. Oh, and members, any comments? Mr. Chairman, um, we just simply say um, we all know, because just by virtue of being on this board, but I think the public has a good sense of the unique role IST has played in getting these vaccinations into arms, particularly here in Chesterfield County. Um, VDH had their system. I know they moved into another system. And in some private conversations, I think there was general uh, agreement that the best system was here in Chesterfield County. And so I, I just have to say, 
uh, kudos to each of you and uh, to your entire team uh, because when you and you look at that slide and I'm talking to Susan in the back too because that green slide that they showed with all those things that they did three years of staff time that we need to put that out on Facebook and get that out to the public so they understand the sacrifice that this department made, which uh, in my view, in organizing all of that data, I grew up using uh, Microsoft Access, and I don't even think they make that program anymore, but I'm very familiar with the process of deduplicating data and having to do that on a daily basis. Good God save whoever's doing that. Uh, because um, you know that's hard work and understanding who's been vaccinated and, and updating the various sites and all of this and even in your internal dashboards is quite impressive because um, it gives you an idea of, of, of how your efficiency is going. So I just have to say, it's amazing what, what y'all have done here and um, can't say enough about it. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Any others? Well, I just want to echo what what, what what Chris has said, I mean, having gone through the process over there and spoken with uh, many constituents um, who on the early onset were struggling to get on the list uh, to get a shot and going from that to being able to get over there and get a shot and going through the process and um, the biggest comment was, man, this was really quite the operation. Uh, it went very quickly, very smoothly, no glitches. Um, and I think that, you know, we're going back to the letter that we had sent to the governor early in the year about some of the issues we had and how quickly those issues were resolved and put us in a position for several weeks where we were leading the Commonwealth for a jurisdiction our size and getting first shots in the arms. I think we're third right now, but first and second shots. Um, and I think that just speaks to uh, the collaboration that took place within all of the departments uh, res that were responsible in getting this done. So I uh, say on behalf of the constituents, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Well, I certainly joined them in saying thank you. We appreciate you. Technology truly impacts our lives in so many ways, and you've demonstrated that. So thank you so very much. And uh, please join me in thanking them, everyone, with a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thanks for being here today. We appreciate it. In closing, too, I, I just want to say that this is the same team that it, you know, they do more than vaccinations, and, and then they're probably looking forward to doing more than vaccinations. So all the services, all the e-services, all the 24-7 ways in which we have figured out how to operate and, and continue to operate post-pandemic, uh, you're looking at, again, just an example of, of a few of those employees that, that supervise or manage or work hard in, in those divisions. and. And going back to these vaccination sites, I think there's three or four people from the sheriff's office in the audience, uh, as well as the sheriff himself, but it actually starts with that office. That's the first point of contact. So by the time where I even was a volunteer and just checking somebody in at the door, they were already greeted by two to three other people that you know, held their hand and made them feel, feel welcome. So thank you.